This mutation is called Field of Screams and is played on missed opportunities. We have two mutators active. We have Polarity and we have Minesweeper. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the conditions of what is going on, but first let's have a look at the Masteries. We have 30 points into the Gary cooldown, 30 points in Stead Zone bonus, and 15-15 into the Stedlite cooldown, more freight pollution Mastery. And Stedman is using the best buddy prestige. Stukov, 30 points into the Volatile Infested, 30 points into the Apocalypse cooldown, and 30 points into the Infested Dur Inf Infantry Duration Mastery, with Lord of the Horde prestige selected. Now, Usually, people are not able to solo Polarity Mutators, because if you do a solo on the Polarity Mutator, that kind of beats the point of Polarity. But, what Tutu has done over here, is he's actually playing on an alt account, and he's soloing the- like, I didn't know how to classify this. This is a solo, but one person playing on two different clients. So I think he's probably set up like, some kind of a sandbox environment, or he's playing on the laptop, or something along those lines. Uh, so yeah, it's basically a 2-2 solo, but he's playing two commanders at the same time, and he is not using the Maguru map shared command, which is something that you can sometimes do. So there is no share command over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the APM view. This thing is the commander APM, so you can see which commander he's issuing commands to over the course of this mission. Now, one thing to note is that he will be posting his first person view of this game on his own YouTube channel and what I will do is I will pin a link in the in the comments below on this video so that you can go and check out his channel and subscribe to him obviously but also have fun and just watch like what how he's able to do this so just an absolutely insane game I don't think I don't think anyone envisioned that, that this is the kind of game that I'd be casting and I just did not even think that I'd be casting this kind of game and this is definitely one of the most unique games I have casted in my co-op casting career, but it is going to be a lot of fun, I'm 100% sure. So, Field of Screams. Let's talk about this mutator a little bit. Field of Screams is really difficult for one reason. It is that this mutator, Minesweeper, spawns mines around the, the map, and what can sometimes happen is that the harvesting bot will pop out of Stetman's lab, and the mines will instantly hit the bot, and you will lose your first bot before it even like makes a step out. So, so there's there are sometimes minefields that will spawn in this spot, and it just makes the mission so much difficult, more difficult, because you're pretty much guaranteed a loss if you lose one more bot throughout the course of this game, which is you know not very difficult to do, given the fact that spider mines deal something like 250 damage. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. But Stukov is a very good commander for this mutation because he is able to spawn a large number of infested and stall the attack waves and the harass waves as well as soak up damage from the mines like this. So unfortunately Widow Mines will reset over the course of time, but at least taking out taking the spire mines out of the equation by just you know getting a bunch of infested units to run into the spire mines does help a lot in this mutation. Um, for the weekly mutation shorts that I release on the YouTube channel, I recommended Stepman, but I also recommended Zeratul. Zeratul P3 can work really well because his tornadoes do not need detection, and additionally, because the Spire Mines and Widow Mines are not natural detectors, you can actually jump Zeratul in here and start taking these out as long as there are no detectors nearby, which would cause Zeratul to just get instantly wrecked. So, it does help a little bit, and I did mention, make a mention as well that free-to-play players will be struggling on this mutation because it is going to be really, really difficult to clear with a commander like Kerrigan, but it is possibly, it is potentially doable. So, so far, so good. Stukov has taken one gas over here. He doesn't really need a lot of gas. He needs just maybe a little bit for his research, but nothing really too much. And given the fact that he's not even going to be able to micro as much and, or macro as much, it's really not necessary to take the extra gases. So we do have a command center already set up over here for Stukov. Stetman now is going to be just basically issuing the main commands over here, and he's pretty much cleared out this area for the next wave of harvesting bots, which is kind of nice. So right now, Stukov just needs to start ramping up and clearing out, or building up some more of his bunker accounts over here. So all these areas have been cleared now. All that's left is for Stukov to go ahead and clear out these mines, 
and we have some upgrades on the way for Spigoth. So we have one bunker coming out. We have the Brutal Ingestation upgrade. Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah, Brutal Ingestation upgrade. We have a level one attack upgrades coming out for Spigoth. And the next wave of our bots are ready and good to go. Enemy attack composition is the Siege of Storms. So this is going to be an air comp. There are going to be some Phoenixes in the mix here, which will give a little bit of a reprieve for Stetman and Stuko, because the Phoenixes cannot actually target these Harvesting bots, that makes them just end up flying around just aimlessly, which is kind of funny. So, Stetman is just going to start clearing out this area as well, this thing seems to be attacking his Zergling, he's not particularly happy. One very important upgrade for Stetman is the Hardened Egonergy Shield upgrade, which limits the amount of damage that Zerglings can take per hit. And when you have a 250 damage Spire Mine hitting a Zergling for 10 damage, it is an ultimate feels good man moment in the game. So that is how Stetman is just able to deal with these mines very effectively, just runs the Zerglings through. And you know, they will die if you do not, if you're not careful, but it, he is a lot more forgiving than a lot of other commanders where you know they usually just get one shot by the Spire Mines. But Spire Mines do deal splash damage as well. So this wave is going to be dealt with with the first Igor. Stukov's army is also in position to deal with the air units over here. And these Phoenix just cannot do anything here. There is another harasser coming in on the southern side. The Alexander also in position here. And using the Hugs Overload is able to tank a lot of that damage. And Igor's coming out as well to clear the rest of this harass wave here. And now there's another one on the northern side. Stalkers are a little bit of an issue because those things will, it will be able to target the Harvesting Bot. And they are actually starting to attack and focus down this Harvesting Bot, which might be a bit of an issue. But Super Gary already in position, drawing aggro. And he has a lot of HP as well. He's getting a 2000 HP with a Hogs Overload. Not counting the Hogs Overload, obviously. So he's able to soak up a lot of damage and just stall this Harass Wave while the bots get out of the way. Now there's an Attack Wave coming in on the... From the northern area here and this should be able to be dealt with very very quickly there is stukov and stepman already in position to deal with this and stukov actually surprisingly not really flowing a lot of minerals so that is actually really nice so phoenix is jumping in here and they will start to lift up some more of these enemy units but super gary will be able to clear out this this attack wave very very quickly it's just gonna attack the rest of these depths dead so what do we have in production right now for Sukov? Sukov is going for his invested columns compound upgrades we have some hydralisk upgrades as well being produced here and you can see just lots of damage being dealt by the infested or, or lots of infested a lot of damage being dealt to the infested by the minefields here but Super Gary needs to try and clear these out and he's actually slightly behind he might end up actually losing one of these bots if he's not a little bit faster in clearing out some more of these enemy camps here but Stukov has not snowballed just yet he needs a lot of bunkers to be able to snowball he's sitting at about eight bunkers right now which is decent but he needs about 10 to 15 bunkers to be able to sustain the amount of damage out but he's gonna need to clear out these minefields because the splash damage is just taking out a lot of his infested and notice how super gary is using the hugs overload to keep these infested units alive he's just creating these Infesting units are going to tank so much damage and just soak up a lot of the Withermine's hits. So this area has been cleared out, but there is still another enemy camp in the spot here that needs to be dealt with. And Super Gary is starting to jump in, and he just wants to try and jump and just soak up some more of this damage. You can see all the infested ending up dying over here. And Brutal Ingestation is a little bit helpful for these infested units, but like they need to actually draw aggro of a lot of these fire mines here. The bots are about to, or they have actually departed right now. And I think, I think this bot may end up dying because there are still a lot of minefields left over and nothing has been cleared out. You can see Stepan just trying to clear this out, sending his army into this area here to clear, but he needs to deal with this harvesting bot and the harass wave that is actually killing it off. This harvesting bot might end up going down. We're going to pay attention over here. These are just phoenixes, so not really much of an issue, but this bot might be taking a lot of damage over here. And there are widow mines still not cleared up by Stukov's army, so... Ally is trying to move in, or Sukov is trying to move in, but this is not going to happen. And there are a lot of mines over there, and all those mines have not triggered. So one with a mine, two with a mine, there might be a Spire Mine over there, and there might be a couple more. Oh, there's one more, two more Spire Mines, and that is a Harvesting Bot gone. So that Harvesting Bot has been killed off, and Setman is obviously not too happy about it. I'm talking to the announcer, Setman. But this does simplify the mission a little bit. It means that Setman and Sukov can actually just focus on dealing with this harvesting bot and protecting that instead of going for the other side. So, on somewhat unfortunate, but nothing really much could have been done. It was a little bit too slow to clear there, but 
Now there is another harass wave coming up and Sepin and Zukov already in position to try and deal with this wave. So what do we have now? So far so good, like not really a lot of mineral float for Stukov. This is going to be a really hectic game. And again, I will draw your attention to the fact that this is one player playing on two different StarCraft clients. So he's just like all tabbing out between one game and another to try and play this mutation solo. He's actually soloing this mutation in true polarity form, which is absolutely insane. So gotta give him a lot of credit for this play. And now there will be another attack wave coming in from the northern area. So this is a little bit of a reprieve here. So a little bit of downtime allows Tukov to try and focus on this. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to stick in this expansion already. Putting down a few more bunkers. Two more bunkers in production right now for Stukov. And he's also getting his barracks upgrades. So he's going to get his plague munitions and his retinal augmentation upgrade. Those upgrades will increase the overall DPS capability of his trooper army, which will be really nice. And now there is the big attack wave coming in from the northern side. And this attack wave, I think, should be able to face plant itself right into the Super Gary plus of army so it should not really be too much of an issue hugs overload again being used to keep these armies alive remember you stukov or stepman does not want to lose all of stukov's infested units otherwise bad things are going to end up happening to him so using this hugs overload just to make sure that, that he has something to be able to deal with these annoying hybrids and these phoenixes so this hybrid will end up going down all in all really well handled over here and the broodlings that have spawned from the broodling gestation upgrade will just end up aggroing some more of these enemy units in this enemy base here but stukov and stepman have to hurry the next wave of harvesting bots will be spawning very very soon and they will make their way towards these enemy camps here and none of these enemy camps have been cleared and more importantly none of the minefields in that area has been cleared out as well so this is going to be this could be very problematic for Seven Suko, but right now it does look like Stukov is starting to snowball and getting the rest of his his bunkers out. So he's sitting so far at about fifteen, about fourteen bunkers right now. How many bunkers does he have in production? He has three more bunkers in production, getting his level two attack upgrades as well. So that should be really, really good. There's one random hybrid. I don't know where the hybrid came from, but there's one random hybrid over here, and it's just being a little bit annoying right now for Stukov because he's just completely blocking these bunkers. So. Stetman is going to move his army over here just to draw a little bit more aggro. And finally, the Broodlings come up and Apocalypse comes down. He has no time for this. He has to go and deal with this area. One last enemy camp here. And like I said, the deadliest part of these enemy camps is these random Wither Mines. And more importantly, these Spire Mines over here. So these Spire Mines are going to start aggroing some of these Broodlings, which will be really nice. And drawing a lot of aggro from some of these Wither Mines as well. So this area will finally end up getting cleared out. And not a moment too soon because these harvesting bots are now making their way towards this last or towards the set of enemy camps here in these terrazine geysers so all in all so far so good there's another harass wave coming in from the far left and again setman and Stukov, uh, Stukov slightly out of position, but that should not be too much of a problem. Remember that he has to go all tap move Siameter over. So Stukov is trying his best to not constantly move the Siameter because he needs to try and focus on one spot or another. So another harass wave coming in from here now. And again, this will be a little bit of an issue, but Stefan needs to try and move into position. And again super gary pushing in here with the help of stukov's army and notice what has happened over here we have some more bunkers like one thing when you do one thing you should do when you're playing p3 stukov is always try and spread your bunkers apart across different areas of the map see how there are bunkers over here and there are bunkers over here and there are bunkers over here bunkers over here so when you do this your infested units actually take different pathing as you move around as you, you know, move your cymeter over and this just means that you know they just there's a lower chance of them getting body blocked by each other and by the bunkers and this also increases your overall spread so this does make life a little bit easier if you are playing p3 stuka but notice how stefan is also putting spore crawlers over here these spore crawlers are there just to deal with the random annoying phoenixes and some of the random air guns just drawing aggro just using whatever resources he has available to just stall Amon's forces because when you're playing with polarity on this mission the goal is to just stall as much as you possibly can just making sure that these attack waves are not hitting the harvesting bots because it's very, very easy to lose a harvesting bot if these things have nothing to aggro. If they have stuff to aggro, then they will aggro your army. And that is basically what the plan is, especially when you have polarity active. 
Polarity just makes it so much more difficult. Your armies just have to sit there and take it. If not, your harvesting bots will end up getting lost here. So we have a bunch of phoenixes here. Phoenix is not really too impactful. Sukov's army now redirecting over here to try and deal with these random oracles. Spore crawlers are also doing a little bit of aggro. And now the main attack wave on this mission has spawned from the north. And Sukov's army is already in position, so he will be able to stall it temporarily at least. But they are actually moving in the wrong direction because they're moving towards that Siameter. So these void rays now are going to be having nothing to aggro, and they might actually start aggroing this bunker, but again, very nice movement here from Stetman, using his Zerglings just to soak up the damage, while his Hydralis get into position to deal with these Void Rays, so that is that attack wave, very well handled, few more depths here left over, but Sukov's army will be able to deal with this, but like I said, this is still, he is still not out of the woods, there is still the final enemy camps here that need to be cleared out, and he needs to start hurrying there, Siameter has been repositioned, Sukov floating about 3,000 minerals right now. I'd like to see a few more bunkers being dropped here for Sukov, but I think Stetman has to try and focus on some more of these. Okay, yeah, there we go. You can see the minerals starting to drop right now. So Sukov is going to start building a lot more bunkers, but right now he has to push into this, these enemy camps here. So Stetman's going to be issued some more commands. Again, back to Sukov, trying to reposition the Siameter. Again, just getting these armies to start pushing through and clearing out the rest of these enemy forces. And now Stetman is going to be taking control again, using the Egorbs to try and clear these these mine these minefields over here. Now, one thing to note is that Super Carry can't aggro the Wither Mines. He cannot aggro the Spire Mines, so he does need some kind of ground unit to aggro them. And this is where Sukov's army comes into play, just using those Broodlings and being a little bit inhumane to the Broodlings. I will switch over back to the units lost. We can actually take a look and see how the units lost. Over here. Unfortunately, Broodlings are not shown, but more than 1,000 infested have given their lives and just mostly killed to Minesweeper, I think. Mostly killed to the Minesweeper Mutator. But this area has been essentially cleaned up. There are still some more Widow Mines over here, but Tsuko's army is already in position to clear this out now. And again, there is a little bit of a downtime now, so Sukov should take advantage of this downtime to start building a lot more bunkers. And that is what he is going to do. You can just see his minerals just dropping right now, and his supply just shooting up as he adds more and more bunkers to the mission. Yeah, look at all these bunkers that are there in production. SCVs are going to start producing these bunkers, just giving giving Stukov a little bit more pushing power. And notice how these bunkers are all positioned and spread across the map here, making this a little bit easier to hold and stall these attack waves because stalling is the name of the game over here. So, so far so good. A little bit of some downtime. What do we have in production? We have level three attack upgrades coming out. We have a hatchery being built as well. So this is just in case Stepin were to lose his entire army, he will want to find a way of replenishing his army really quickly. Also stalling maybe some random hybrids that may spawn and from the final attack wave, just keeping it off the bots here. So first harass wave is on the new that spawns is going to be is going to run straight headfirst into Stetman and Sukov's army. So that should be cleared that reasonably effectively. So we have another harass wave coming in from the east right now. And I think this bunker might this bunker actually was in construction for a while. It's I think I think just Stukov just didn't realize that the, the SCV was lost over there. He might notice it right now because he's like in this position. But like I said, it doesn't really matter too much as long as you're able to stall. Oracles going full disco inferno. Apocalypse uses its missile to clear out those oracles. There's another attack wave now on the north here. These harvesting bots haven't even made it to the Vespin or to the Terzin geysers yet, so. It's still gonna be a long, long time, and this is this is gonna be a while. But notice how the blue zones are being used here to reposition both these armies. Even though Stukov has this creep and his vessel do move reasonably quickly, like just being able to reposition your armies is really, really important. And because you're playing with polarity, it's not that you can, you know, each player can take one side. You have to be able to either split your armies, or if you're in in this kind of situation where you know you have a Siameter and you're all tabbing between StarCraft clients, it is a little bit difficult to do that. So using these blue zones just to get the armies back into position is really, really nice. One Ego Orb here will be able to clear out most of these Void Rays. So all that is left now are for Stukov's army to clear out the whatever is left 
of the harass wave and upgrades are just being researched left right and center there is another harass wave coming in sukov has already repositioned the scimitar so that should be really good and now these void rays will start to aggro this harvesting bubble again the zerglings moving into position just to try and soak up the damage to make sure that these void rays do not focus down the harvesting bot because remember one harvesting bot has already gone gone down so all that is left is for one harvesting bot to die and that is pretty much the end of the run so alexander gets used here as well to try and take out the rest of these void rays there is another harass wave coming in on the southern side this bunker now has been completed and that scv is going to end up getting wiped out by the adepts because they are having none of that and Arm, both the armies are able to converge on this S or on this harass wave and clear that out too. So two out of the three harvesting bots are done so far, which is really really nice. 500 APM right now. I think that was probably just a quick remax of his army. And what do we have in production? Yeah, 34 zerglings, three hydralisks. There is one more harass wave coming up, and there will be also an attack wave that will be coming up. So. Setman Suka wants to deal with this harass wave first. Just try and stall some of this. This wave is just going to hit these bunkers over here. They will start to kill off some of these bunkers. But the goal here is to just weaken the rest of this harass wave here. And that is pretty much the harass wave cleared out. So now, this is going to be the big fight of the game. There, the, a lot of these bunkers will be going down. I think how many bunkers were lost here. Uh, we're at 33 bunkers right now. Two bunkers were lost. But yeah, take a look at how inhumane this is. 1,500 infested units have died so far. And let's have a look here. Total of 4,000 infested units have been made. So that is actually kind of interesting as well. I don't think it will go up to 1,600. All these Tempests right now are going to get killed off by the Corruptors here. And there is another Harass Wave coming in from the north here. But this bot is pretty much safe here. This Harass Wave is never going to be able to hit the bot because it's just going to aggro these bunkers. So I think Sukov will be able to clear out these har this Harass Wave entirely as well. Both the armies is just converging in on this Harass Wave and there is nothing Amon can do to stop this right now. And those are the rest of these Void Rays just completely deleted. Really, really well played. One of the most unique games that I have ever casted in co-op. It's one person playing two commanders by alt tabbing in and out. And there you go. That is the polarity mutation. And you guys thought polarity could not be solved. There you go. Dutu has done. Go check out his YouTube channel. Go subscribe to him. He does mutation souls every single week. Really well played. Those are all the harvesting bots saved. And that is EG.